the video is titled women are not funny they can be it's just that usually they're not humor is a man's domain typically when she says hey let's just be friends translation i don't find you sexually arousing however let me use you for your masculinity your positive male energy your ability to be decisive your protection etc while not giving you sex. God forbid she take a break from the CC. She's gonna go from getting pumped and dumped on one dating app to another one. Ooh, you're kind of crazy if you expect any different results, my chick. My 18, just take a shower. Reality, although showers will improve your hygiene, they cannot wash away flaws beneath the skin. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dehydrated Eddie Burback. And it's bad news everybody, I found another guy. Alert, alert, new guys are dropping every week and somehow they just keep getting worse. And the thing about this channel is that when I find them, I have to show them to you and, and look at them and we look at them together, we hold hands, we say, why do you do this stuff? Please, enough is enough. So recently on this channel, we've taken a bit of a descent into what's known as the manosphere. The manosphere is an area of the internet that's focused on well, the boys. It consists of everything from men's rights activists, to men going their own way, to pickup artists, to everyone's favorite alpha male podcasters, all the way into the deep dark depths of inceldom. It's quite the party. They all love women and respect women a, a lot. Totally normal, regular guys being dudes, guys giving dating advice and stuff. What you say is irrelevant to them. They don't want to learn, they don't want to change their minds. Sounds like a lot of uh, modern women today, right? Now, one thing we haven't talked about yet is a term you may have heard thrown around the manosphere before, which is the red pill. It's a reference to the matrix when Neo is offered a choice between the blue pill and the red pill. The blue pill keeping him in his safe, comfortable dream world and the red pill unmasking the truth. So in these communities, the red pill is styled as seeing reality for what it is. Unlike those blue pilled cucks, where a blue pilled weenie might say something like, you know, there's someone out there for everyone. A red piller will say, actually, no, there isn't, not unless you're a high value male. If we consult this chart I found on 4chan, we can clearly see that hypergamy means that women simply will not date down. And thus, you need to sigma male grind your CEO ass up to CEO of your company to become a big man. And once you're 47 and a half years old and Forbes listed, that's when you can go around your college town trawling for young women who are unspoiled by the plight of society, they will gravitate towards you based on your sheer high-valued maleness. It's a scientific truth. So basically, unhinged, misogynistic crap, overt sexism couched in biological essentialist rhetoric, vast generalizations about women, what they want, how they actually don't know what they want because they just, they don't really understand it like we do, how guys just know better. And that's why instead of actually just listening to women, you should just subscribe to their podcast channel because they'll teach you the tricks and tips. And as bad as all this stuff is, well, don't worry, it gets worse. It goes one level deeper. After the red pill at the dark liminal spaces at the edges of the manosphere that's where you find the black pill for the uninitiated the black pill means accepting the belief that if you are an inferior man this means you have no chance of ever establishing sexual relationships with women and inferiority in this case is defined by immutable characteristics like your height bone structure facial symmetry overall attractiveness the, the size, size of your penis and if you are one of these inferior males that fall short short in any of these characteristics, no amount of self-improvement, personality, sense of humor, nothing can make up for these flaws or prevent you from not being able to have sex or to use their terms, reproduce and carry on your lineage. For black pillars, your status as an incel is biologically determined. It's inherited and it lives with you until you die. It is a genuinely dangerous ideology, but the people who subscribe to it are often unaware of this. They're brought into these online communities through a shared experience of isolation, loneliness, frustrations with dating apps, insecurity and or self-loathing, and the communities further perpetuate this self-loathing by pushing generally distorted, one-sided, sexist views about women. And this is where our new guy of the day comes in. Wheat Waffles is the channel name. Huh, that's weird. Doesn't sound 
incelly enough. Not at all, actually. It just sounds like a healthy foods cooking channel or something. Maybe I have the wrong cha- Oh, okay. Well, are you sub five, normie, or Chad? How to know when it's truly over. Why the black pill is so underrated in 2021. Four in-depth reasons. 100 black pill beliefs in one video. Warning, the gap between normies and Chads is growing. Oh, they even have a four-part series analyzing the mathematically, scientifically, objectively perfect male face. Hey, does anybody need therapy? Because today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month. Ad read, it's an ad read, everybody. Ah, gotcha. It's a good, I got you for a goof. May is a month to raise awareness about mental health, fight stigma, and provide support for anyone struggling with their own mental health. This year's theme is Together for Mental Health, sharing personal stories in hopes of encouraging others to prioritize their mental health. A fun fact about me is that I was diagnosed bipolar 2 a few years ago. And when that happened, I remember me and all my family going, oh, so that's why, that's why you're like that. Okay, that's good to know. I wish we'd figured that out sooner, but okay. Another big theme of Mental Health Awareness Month is advocating for access to mental health care. And this has long been one of BetterHelp's goals. They offer customized online therapy that includes video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapists. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline therapy. You can apply for financial aid during the sign-up process, and they do accept HSA benefits. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's network of over 20,000 and licensed therapists that gives you access to help that might not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Then you can schedule secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages, and everything you share is completely confidential. This mental health month, if you or someone you know is struggling, please share BetterHelp with them. You can use my link to get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Noah Sampson. That's better H E L P dot com slash Noah Sampson for 10% off your first month. Okay, now let's get better. Okay, now let's get better. Okay, let's get a big beat. Okay, so back to our new guy of the day, Wheat Waffles. In just over one year of uploading, this channel has netted over 7.5 million views and grown to a healthy 72,000 subscribers. This channel started to get recommended to me after watching a bunch of Manosphere content, all of which was recommended after our last two knucklehead women hater guys. I'm convinced that the YouTube algorithm has a very well-defined niche of women hating Manosphere content, and I will continue to make videos on this as I explore deeper. Be sure to subscribe to stay tuned for the horror. I'm doing fine, I promise. Everything's fine. I'm still a white knight beta cuck feminist, all good, but feel free to keep me in check if I start saying suspicious things. Now, okay, let's look at some examples from the average Wheat Waffles video. How about this one? Delusion. Six reasons modern women incorrectly believe this. In this video, he goes over six key reasons and steps to why women's standards are way too high these days, and not only that, but they're increasing at dangerously high levels. Here's six reasons why women's standards, particularly in terms of looks and height are increasing every passing year to even more ridiculous levels. Number one, makeup causing a sense of false entitlement. Guys, I've seen this so many times before. In my experience, when women wear makeup, it's almost as if they think it turns them into a new person and they totally forget where they came from. Ladies these days put on some lipstick and forget their roots. Their roots as ugly, disgusting, entitled, filthy, repulsive creatures of the night. She's thought to herself before makeup, she's not really expecting Guy's attention. However, after she puts on makeup, now she thinks she's above everyone and cannot settle for anything. So what could this section possibly be responding to? Well, it's this TikTok. First of all, ew. Second of all, ew. Guys, after seeing that clip, it should be clear as day that right now we're witnessing unseen levels of delusion, hysteria, and entitlement in the dating market. It's a five second clip of a girl showing her makeup before and after with a cheeky caption. This is his basis for the claim that women, as a whole, species are too entitled and full of themselves. Like imagine watching that TikTok and then immediately opening up PowerPoint to create a 15 minute presentation on why women are delusional freaks. The checklist for men now goes on and on and on. It is incredible. It's deeply, deeply normal behavior. Another reason for the growing entitlement of these dang woms is uh, 
sexy e-boys or something. Now moving on to reason number three, the media inflating people's perceptions of attractiveness. Let's face it, all content created nowadays, especially that which is consumed by younger generations on platforms like TikTok, features only the best looking, top 5-10% to guys of attractiveness. This kind of content that especially young women are consuming nowadays, leads them to having massively inflated perceptions of attractiveness. They become accustomed to the well above average levels of attractiveness on TikTok, now believing it is the norm. So then, what ends up happening is when they compare what they're seeing online to the guys they see every day in real life, they're massively underwhelmed. Charles Darwin failed to account for the evolutionary stimuli of the POV TikToker. Humanity would simply not exist if we'd been exposed to Tony Lopez's spicy body roll thing in the early days. It is so incredibly funny that the universally dunked on trope of the sexy, vapid TikTok guy content is for this channel some kind of barometer of the modern dating scene. Like Jacob Sartorius humping his pillow is gonna affect international birth rates or some shit. Like ladies, is this a thing? It's not, right? I shouldn't even be asking. Comment below, I know there's at least one of you watching. This channel's ratio has never been more fraternity approved than it is right now. So please do us a solid, sound off in the comments, sound off, thank you. So this video has 120,000 views, a bunch of likes, and as you can imagine, a lot of completely unhinged comments. Fly Drip TikTok Shorts writes, Blue Pill gives you a dream. Red Pill gives you hope. Black Pill shows you the truth. People want to dream, have hope, but never want to accept the harsh truth. Vaccinated anti-vaxxer writes, For the Chad, blue pill makes sense. For the normie, the red pill makes sense after blue pill failed them. For the sub-5, the black pill makes sense after the blue pill and red pill failed them. Jesus writes, Oh hey, Jesus, this is what you've been doing, man? You have a dad. How'd you end up on this bullshit? Never mind. The most ridiculous fact is that an average man can spend five plus years looks maxing by workout, proper diet, lean maxing, and healthy habits, yet that will boost his SMV. I think that means sexual market value. Uh, 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 by almost nothing compared to an average woman that spends an hour putting on makeup. Crazy to think that men allowed this to be socially acceptable. And the only thing it's done for us is turn the dating market into nightmare mode. Hey, listen, JC, what if, hear me out, okay, theoretically, what if we didn't, what if we just didn't say, say stuff like this? Used to be so cool, bro, what happened to you, man? The undertone here is that men allowed this to happen and therefore, Maybe men should, I don't know, you know, sort of stop allowing it to happen. Ah, why do you make your on. lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal. That's why. Why do you put rouge on your cheeks? Same reason. Perhaps by telling women about this worldview or by federal mandate. Eh. To me, one of the most dangerous aspects of this channel is its presentation. It's so clean and simple and it uses large charts and arrows. The sheer amount of statistics he throws in, the numbers he's just hurling at you over and over. It does give it this kind of false sense of intellectualism. Like this black pill worldview is achieved through logic and reasoning. And this paired with the British accent which kind of channels the Sargon effect, you know? You could literally be saying the dumbest shit of all time, but if you have a British accent, it maybe could be perceived as smart. All of it really makes this content insidious, you know? It's absolutely full of leaps in logic and poor reasoning, as most Manosphere content is, but if anyone holds any of these beliefs or insecurities, even remotely, this content will do the trick. Another example of some blatant incel misogyny, insologyny, is this video. No, 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 three reasons never to take women's data advice. He starts the video by playing this clip. All you have to do is walk up to her, tell her you're interested, and give her your number. And don't ask for her phone or anything, just write it down on a little piece of paper and just give it to her. And I guarantee that if you use this method, you're going to get a better response because they already know now that you respect them enough. And then he responds immediately with this. You heard it here first, guys. From now on, all you have to do is simply write down your number on a piece of paper and start handing it out to women like you're a street salesman. Apparently, it's really that easy. But what she didn't mention is to also bring a broom and rubbish bag, so you can have an easier time picking up all of the worthless pieces of paper you handed out that got dropped 30 seconds later. Anyway, to avoid wasting your time, I'll get straight into the video. Here's three reasons why, as a man, you should never take any dating advice from a woman. So... 
a few things here. Firstly, he edited this TikTok down, I think intentionally to try to make it look worse than it is. Like it's just more silly advice from another blue-pilled wom. But even as it's presented here, it's still good advice, right? It's good because this approach respects the woman's time. You're a stranger, she doesn't know you, you don't know her. So by making it brief, you're not putting her in an uncomfortable situation where she has to have an extended interaction with a stranger. You're also giving her agency instead of seeking out her phone number, which you could potentially then use to spam her with calls and texts if she doesn't ever respond. Not that you'd ever do that, dear viewer, but that does happen. Ladies, it's your time to shine again in the comments. And by shine, I mean bring up real traumatic events so you can help out some incels. Come on, just kidding, kind of. Well, I don't know. This woman's strategy is also a low stakes way of setting yourself apart from the dating app crowd. It does take courage to go up to someone and tell them they're pretty and give them your phone number. And that has to count for something, right? Just to understand how Waffles kind of deceptively edited it here, I'm gonna just play the full clip. How to ask a girl out without making her uncomfortable. A boy asked me this on Instagram, and so I thought that I would share it with everyone. And this one's actually pretty simple and easy. All you have to do is walk up to her, tell her you're interested, and give her your number. And don't ask for her phone or anything, just write it down on a little piece of paper and just give it to her. And then leave her alone for the rest of the duration that you're in the same area. All you have to do is literally just say, hey, I think you're really pretty, and hand her your number on a piece of paper. And very importantly, do not ask for their number. I hate when people ask for my number because it puts you in such a weird situation. You either have to just like turn them down right then or there or do it later. And then this random person who you have no idea who they are and you don't know if they're safe, they have your number. Also don't ask for their phone to put your number in because no one just wants to hand their phone to a random stranger. And I guarantee that if you use this method, you're going to get a better response because they already know now that you respect them enough to give them the option. So instead of taking a second to be like, hey, what is trying to be communicated here? Waffles immediately jumps to the catastrophizing narrative about how this obviously wouldn't work and how she's a silly woman for suggesting it. And therefore, all women have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to dating. And so he goes on to make a 15 minute video about it while being objectively wrong. <laughs> there are a few just hilarious moments from this video, like uh, here where he directly compares women to fish. Meanwhile, this second point is much darker. It's saying women are aware of what they're attracted to, but choosing to spread delusion instead. I'll start off this point by asking, would you ever ask a fish how to catch a fish? Well, no, of course not. So why do so many guys ask the women in their lives how to date women? Yeah, Waffles, I don't know if that metaphor really works. I don't think they can be directly compared on account of the, you know, sentience. You guys, today we're gonna answer a simple biological question. Do women be having brains? Or do they just be shopping? Waffles outlines the simp epidemic here. Worse than COVID-19, many say. Guys, in my video, eight reasons why women think they're a 10, I said the biggest reason by far for why this is happening is simping. Everyone should know by now that there is a simp epidemic going on. And the point is, these content creators who are giving advice know if they tell feel-good, nice-sounding theories on their channels, their audience, most of whom are these spoken-about simps, are going to soak all of it up like a sponge. Doesn't give a single real-world example here, just kind of vaguely theorizing about women's motivations using OnlyFans user statistics, probably. Then he goes on to suggest that women are biologically inclined to being on that damn phone. <laughs> and what's the big deal about eFame? Well, have you ever noticed on Tinder how many girls have follow my Insta in their bio? Meanwhile, literally no men include that. It's because of attention. Women desire far more external validation and attention than men do. As guys, we're content to keep ourselves to ourselves, relax, play video games, focus on one thing at a time. Meanwhile, women have a much bigger desire to be sociable and compete for attention. And then he suggests that your fellow male friends are actually the last people you wanna ask for advice because they're out to get you. <laughs> what people should you ask? Well, so far we've established that you shouldn't ask women. How about other groups? How about the guys in your social circle? Well, going back to the fishing example, would it be a good idea to ask your rival fisherman on how to catch fish? I hope you agree with me that of course not. 
This is a terrible idea. Why would your competition give you the answers when you're all competing for the same pool of women? Your little pussy belongs to me. Finally, at the end of the video, it's his big moment to shine, to shed light on the real advice that women are simply not evolved enough to be able to understand. And he outlines a list of three things. If you're genuinely looking for serious dating advice, you have a few options. One, asking an average looks guy or someone who's similar in looks to yourself who most importantly is already in a long-term, successful and committed relationship. This way he won't be tempted to mislead any competition as he's not actually in the dating market at that point. Yeah, so just ask someone that hasn't had to go on a date or get someone's number for literal years. <laughs> the only thing I could think of that's worse advice than that is if you told someone to like, I don't know, check Reddit or Discord? Oh god, he's do he did it, didn't he? Yep, okay, well. Another good option, which is a little harder to find, use online forums like the ones listed here, or Discord servers such as mine, which we'll have a link in the description below by the way. However, the only issue with this is that it does require you to be able to correctly identify and eliminate any counterproductive advice. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Mr. Waffles, I think I'm just gonna stick with the nice, pretty ladies phone number approach. Seems just a little more realistic lastly three any authentic content creators but none who are trying to sell you a course or program as i've talked about in my previous videos most of these are trying to sell you lies and hope in order to keep you trapped in their corrupt system then when you fail you're told to buy even more programs or courses that last one is particularly rich given what's linked in the description of every single one of Waffles' videos. If you click this link, you'll be sent to Wheat Waffles' Fiverr page, where you can pay him up to $25 for a face rating, and using brutal honesty and a light dash of phrenology, he can tell you all the places and ways that you look fucked up and weird. <laughs> Almost 2,000 people have paid for this. He is making a a lot of money selling insecure guys more insecurity. This is fucking bad, man. Like, you can get mad at creators all you want for selling false hope. At least they're selling hope. You're selling more fear and a further reliance on black pill ideology, which also you're selling on your YouTube channel, so that's kind of interesting. You've monopolized the incel product line. Congratulations. And that has to be the scariest thing about this channel, right? It's definitely the reason that I'm making this video. We Waffles is an openly black pilled channel. The black pill, as we went over, is a genuinely dangerous ideology that reinforces futility and hopelessness among already insecure men. This person has built a channel upon this worldview. This sense of immutable failure undergirds all of his content, and he knows it. Not only that, but he has also openly encouraged others to start their own black pill channels, citing a demand for this sort of content. I'm making this video because right now, I believe there is a huge window of opportunity for other black pill content creators to step up and create some really successful channels. And he's absolutely right about this. There is a demand. My YouTube algorithm has only looked like this for a few weeks, but it really wants to show me as much of this stuff as it can. It worries me to see such a direct call to action from an openly black pill channel. And to be fair, you know, he does have a video about how to escape the black pill, which is great, except this is what the comment section looks like. There's no escape. Once you've gotten the knowledge, there's no coming back. The black pill is just the truth. There is no escape. You can ignore the truth, but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring the truth. The black pill always collects eventually. It's important for men to realize that in this day and age, for the most part, you can't be in a long lasting stable relationship with your looks match unless you're a Chad. It's better to go for a girl who is a little less attractive than you. Otherwise, you won't have the upper hand in the relationship and you'll always be be chasing because of her abundance of options. Yeah, okay, totally normal stuff going on here. Women are biologically driven to choose a guy with a higher number than you, so you should cry about it. No, but even in videos like this that are presented under the veneer of trying to escape the black pill, many of his viewers are too far gone to be helped by this and are better served by his other actual black pill content of which his channel is mostly comprised. On top of that, videos that challenge the black pill still perpetuate some deeply distorted views about women and dating. Like this bit about how you should take advantage of older women's age in order to maintain the upper hand in your relationships. Past the age of about 27, women tend to care less about looks as they get older. Older women tend to have less dating market value anyway, so they're not going to be able to afford as crazy standards as their young counterparts. 
cause. Or this part that revisits the hypergamy chart and discusses how women abuse this phenomenon. Most women aren't waiting on Chad. Rather most, up and down the scale, are looking to date anywhere from one to two points up compared to their own attractiveness. Anything lower than that, and they think, absolutely not. I can do way better than this. So, bad stuff all around. What's the upshot of this video I'm making? What's the point, Noah? Why are you doing this? Why are you subjecting us to this crap? Honestly, I'm I'm not a self-help channel. I'm not a dating advice channel. I'm just some guy online that's here to say, this sucks, here it is, and it's out there, and maybe it should stop. I don't know how to do it, but somebody probably can do that better. What I can say is that if you or someone you know, like a brother, a cousin, a dad, if anyone started using language that might be found on a channel like this, there are some resources out there that I think could help. As I mentioned in the previous video, the Men's Liberation subreddit, or r slash men's lib, is a welcoming and open place for the discussion of men's issues that channels intersectional feminism and has some really good conversations going on. That subreddit is also where I found a really good video to show anyone that's getting too deep into this manosphere stuff. It's called Male Dating and Sex Struggles, a Problem in Plain Sight. And it's basically a fully comprehensive guide to the struggles for men when it comes to dating, sex, relationships in the modern age. The video centers around one man's experience of getting really into pickup artistry stuff, eventually recognizing its toxic elements and leaving, but not without taking away some genuinely useful information. Because at the end of the day, so much of this content does contain elements of truth, and that's why it's so popular. The problem is just that most of these solutions are unhinged, misogynistic, and genuinely terrible advice for anyone involved. So let's just try and talk to with our boys about knocking this crap off. How about it? Get it, get it out. Um... That's the end of the video. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you thought below. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And of course, to my wonderful patrons who should be scrolling by on the screen right now. Go to patreon.com slash S-A-M-S-E-N. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Good job, nice job. Let's go team. Yeah, wow, and hey, okay. Who's that loafer? Who's that loafer? Look what the damn cat dragged in. A cat. You okay?